Atmospheric rivers are the Earth's largest rivers, not on the land, but in the sky. Do you want to know more about these atmospheric rivers? If so, then please continue watching this video. I am Akashra Cody, and a hearty welcome to my YouTube channel. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you get a notification about new content that I upload on this channel. All right, let's take a look at the atmospheric rivers. Atmospheric rivers are giant rivers of concentrated water vapor in the sky, carried by tropical jet streams stretching from 500 kilometers wide to several thousands of kilometers long. These narrow, concentrated, and meandering plumes of water vapor in the atmosphere often originate over the tropical oceans, and they bring heavy rain or even snow when they make landfall by crashing into mountain ranges. While atmospheric rivers typically bring their most significant rainfall to coastal areas, their impacts can travel hundreds of miles inland, bringing heavy rain to interior locations and causing catastrophic floods, disrupting travel, inducing mudslides, and causing severe damage to both life and property. The most affected areas by these atmospheric rivers are the westerly coastal regions of the world. By this, I literally mean every west coast. The west coast of North America, the west coast of Europe, the west coast of North Africa, the west coast of the Iberian Peninsula, Iran, even New Zealand. This goes everywhere. And you know what? You might wonder that this could be the reason why we need to carry an umbrella when we go to Seattle or London. A well-known example of a type of strong atmospheric river that can hit the U.S. West Coast is called the Pineapple Express, and it's named this because of the apparent ability to bring moisture from the tropics near Hawaii, the home of pineapples, to the U.S. West Coast. I mean, that's a pretty interesting name if you ask me. In fact, the states of Washington, Oregon, and California are much dependent on these atmospheric rivers because they provide 30 to 50% of all of the precipitation that occurs in these states. If fewer than the normal amount of atmospheric rivers occurs in these states, you could potentially see droughts coming in. And yep, that means that atmospheric rivers have a central role in the global water cycle. Droughts can often result if fewer than the normal number of atmospheric rivers occur in these states. And yes, that means that atmospheric rivers have a central role in the global water cycle. A vast majority of these atmospheric rivers happen in the fall and winter, but they are possible in the spring and summer months too. In the United States, the northern Pacific coast of Washington and Oregon receives the bulk of the activity in the fall, but California receives more in the winter. Atmospheric rivers move with the weather, and there are at least three to five atmospheric river systems at any given time in each of the Earth's hemispheres. And these have been actually increasing in intensity slightly over the past century. Weather forecasting the outcomes of atmospheric rivers is honestly quite challenging because they are somewhat unpredictable. They can temporarily stall in place, they can change their landfall location, they can intensify or weaken, they can interact with other atmospheric rivers or remnants of previous atmospheric rivers, and all of those will impact the amount of rainfall or snowfall and the severe flooding that may cause within short notice. So that's why atmospheric rivers are really hard to predict, because anything can happen with them and so forecasting them is really really hard to find out that is all about atmospheric rivers if you like this video then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss more of my videos every time i upload once again thanks so much for watching love you akash